in this video I'm just going to talk about doing electron dot diagrams. These are also known as Lewis structures in the old uh, school system, uh, but now they're just electron dot diagrams. And later on we're going to use electron repulsion theory to uh, determine what their three-dimensional shape will be. So I'm going to start off with uh, the water molecule. So the formula for water is H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen. To start off, I need to figure out, choose which is my center atom. I'm th in this case, I'm going to use oxygen because it has the most unpaired electrons. Oxygen lives in group 16 of the periodic table. This means it has six valence electrons. And I just happen to know that when I put my electron dots on it around the outside, I've put down four for now, but I know it has six in total. You need to go around the sides of the each, imagine you've got an imaginary box that goes around each element. When you, when you draw the electron dots, you need to put them on each side. And only once you've um, completed uh, one rotation around the outside, then you can start doubling up your electrons. So I've got six in total, so I need to add two more. One, two. I'll draw it again over here just for clarity reasons. So here is my oxygen atom. One, two, three, four, five, six electrons. And now I'm going to draw the hydrogen atom. And I know hydrogen has only one valence electron, and that's on the because it's in group one. Uh, I'm going to draw hydrogen's at electrons with, with crosses. You can use different colors if you like, but for, if you've only got one pen, you can just draw them as crosses. So here's my hydrogen, there's my cross, Here's my hydrogen, there's my cross. Now I've effectively made an, a covalent bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen, represented by this pair of electrons. One comes from hydrogen, one comes from oxygen, that is a covalent bond. Same thing over here. So my structure is something like this. When you draw the structural form, structure, uh, you normally leave the lone pairs of electrons, um, you omit them. That's just usually. But for some cases, you want to put them there just so you can work out their three-dimensional shape. So I'm going to do another example, but this time with methane. This is CH4. So I'm going to choose the one with the most unpaired electrons, and that is carbon. So here's my uh, carbon atom, and it, it lives in group 14 of the periodic table. So that's one, two, three, four valence electrons. And in the same way, I'm going to draw the hydrogens surrounding it with a cross. And when I cr add my cross, I'm pairing up on each side of the imaginary box with my hydrogen's electron. Now, from this Lewis dot structure, I can now draw the structure, which looks like something like this. This is the structure. This is the electron dot structure. Okay, I think the textbook might have referred to this as structural formula. Um, now let's move on. So let's. That's what it. That's what we can uh, imagine it on two dimensions. Uh, but we know that molecules can be three-dimensional. and But how do you know what shape they will be? Well, there's this theory called VSEPR theory, and I like to call it VESPA, but uh, VSEPR, and that represents valence shell electron pair repulsion. That means that if you've got any pair of electrons, so this pair here will repel this pair here, which will also repel this pair here, which will also repel this pair here. So when you draw this three-dimensional shape, you've got four pairs of electrons involved in bonding, and they're all going to push each other away as far as they can until you get to a result which is the most stable, and this is when they are as far apart as possible. Uh, let's look at the water molecule first. So I'm going to take this structural formula of here and draw another one. So here is the H. Here's the oxygen, 
other bond and there are my lone pairs I've just drawn them wonky the trick to drawing these is imagine as imagine the lone pairs as if they were um, bonds imagine if they were they, they except they're just not attached to anything so I'm going to visualize these lone pairs as a single stick instead so this is my little visualization now I can think of these bonds or sticks and then three-dimensionally arrange them such they are as far away from each other as possible and when you've got these four sticks the result that is most stable is a tetrahedron shape a tetrahedral shape and that looks basically like my camera tripod just over there it's got the three legs and it's got one one um, you know the, the column of the tripod pointing upwards again so you've got that four sticks in three-dimensional uh, space when you draw it you need to draw it like this you need to have one bond going straight up into the sky the next bond has to be towards the left and by drawing them like this you are representing a sort of a plane through the middle of the tetrahedron and those two bonds are in the same plane as your viewing angle imagine if you're drawing two light imagine putting two sticks against a flat wall in front of you that's what you should be seeing the other two bonds of the tripod of the tetrahedral shape one has to come towards you and one has to recede further away from you into the board I find it's more easy to imagine these as if you put this tetrahedron in a middle of a fog field where objects that are closer towards you tend to have more contrast and so they appear a bit darker in appearance but the objects that are further away from you into the fog tend to look a bit more misty and, 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 and low contrast so the bond that comes towards us we represent this as a solid wedge in chemistry and the bonds that recede from your plane of view are drawn as a dashed line or a dashed wedge now you need to make sure you draw it so it looks almost flat uh, and this is the basics of the tetrahedral shape. So I'm going to put the oxygen in the middle here. And I'm going to attach the outer, uh, outer atoms to this structure and leave the other ones alone. So when you get molecules that only have two, uh, uh, two atoms attached to the outside, then it's a lot easier to attach them to the bonds that are in the same plane of view as the board, same plane of view as the wall. Um, it just ends up being easier that way to determine what the shape is. So if I attach the hydrogens there, I can clearly see that this shape looks bent. These two bonds, which are going towards me and further away from me, they are just um, holding on. They're just representing the um, electron pairs, the, I mean, the lone pairs. They push the other two bonds further away to give it that bent shape but you don't really see it in its three-dimensional shape it's just there to help us visualize the the angle of these two bonds here we call this shape bent but you can also call it v-shaped let's try carbon uh let's try the methane molecule like we did before so the um, structure form here has four bonds so that means the furthest away that they can possibly be is the tetrahedral shape again but then we just attach more of these hydrogens to the outside so again for the methane molecule I draw my first bond that goes straight towards this to the top of my page carbon is the middle first the second bond is towards the left at a low angle and one has to come towards me and that's a solid wedge and one has to recede from my point of view so that's going to be a dashed wedge so now I'm going to attach these hydrogens the outer atoms to the outside of my tetrahedron and this is my shape are any of these bonds imaginary are they just holding on to lone pairs well no in that case this is a tetrahedron because none of these bonds are imaginary it's a tetrahedron let's try another example which is a bit more tricky 
Let's try ammonia. This is NH4. Now we're going to do the electron dot structure, which is the Lewis structure. Then we'll move on to do the three-dimensional structure, which is the uh, using the VSEBR theory or the VSEBR theory. So nitrogen is my central atom because it lives in group number 15, which means it has five valence electrons, whereas hydrogen only has one because it's in group one. So around the outside I go one, two, three, four, and five. And with the hydrogens, only one valence electron, I'm going to draw them with a little cross to represent hydrogen's electron. So when I draw the structural formula, it should look like this. In this case, I happen to know that nitrogen's lone pair is important to its three-dimensional shape. So I'm going to keep it there for visualization purposes for those who are watching my camera over here. When I draw this one, remember how I told you to imagine lone pairs as if they were a bond, but they're just not attached to anything. Now I've got one, two, three, four of these bonds. I'm now going to arrange them in three-dimensional space, space as far away as possible as I can, and the only shape that's possible is a tetrahedron. So again, I'm going to draw that tetrahedral shape once more. So one bond to the sky, nitrogen in the middle, one to the left, one has to come towards me, and that's going to be a solid wedge. And one receding into the page. Now I'm going to assign the outer atoms. I've got three hydrogens here. To, for some reason, it's a lot easier to put these three on the bottom of my tetrahedron. Um, I don't know, I, don't, I can't think of a good reason why this is, but if you've got two outer atoms on a tetrahedral sh sort of shape, put them on the ones that are on the same plane as the page. If you've got three, I think it's better to put them on the bottom, where it looks quite easy to detect that it's actually a tripod shape. So if I put the hydrogens here, here, and here, it's now quite easy to visualize that that is a tripod shape. It looks like a pyramid. So the real name is trigonal, because it's a triangular-based pyramid, and pyramidal. And that's a three-dimensional shape. I hope this helps. I'm sorry if it got a bit confusing. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a name for doing this process here, but I've honestly forgotten it. And you can look it up on the web. There are plenty of guys on drawing um, three-dimensional structures for molecules. Um, this works for covalent, bo uh, covalent molecules because uh, ionic bonding doesn't do this sort of regular thing. Okay, I hope this helps. Leave a comment below or let me know in class if you'd like me to do this again or um, if you need further clarification. Okay, thank you. Bye.